but I mean, the journey that is to come, if it was to come, if, if this was to become a second season, I mean, yeah, of course I'm excited. I mean, it's, it's incredible. You've been given 10 seconds in Swedish, but you can have whatever you want. What do you want? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, I, to be honest, you're sat in her limits because I, I jump back and forth. That, that that's that's fine. Du pratar uh, svenska, gör så svenska och engelska. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bloomberg writing for a movie scene in Sweden. Uh, it's Peace, how are you, Jonathan? I'm good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you all up on the shelf there. Yeah. <laughs> I I I actually finished the entire um uh, season uh, of of this show first and then i uh, had to see what happened next so i finished the entire book as well so that's good praise okay great thank that you. is good praise thank you very much yeah uh, so uh, my, my first question uh, actually goes to hugh uh, about how it is to see like what you've written come to life in this kind of way i know you said that you write like cinematically already but uh, having all these people uh, doing like the best of their craft to make your vision come to life how how has that experience been for you it's incredibly humbling um one of the first emotions that ever came me when i went into the production offices the first time was just a profound sense of guilt that all these people were having to get up every morning and have a cup of coffee and drive to work just to you know create a world that i had dreamt up uh, but then once you talk to them and they realize, you know, how much fun they're having and they're thrilled to be on the production, uh, it assuages some of that. But yeah, my my first reaction was just like, I am sorry for causing this much trouble. So I fell in love with the actual narrative of a world. I love the fact that it's sort of, yes, it's futuristic and dystopian and it's science fiction in the sense that we're living in in, in the future. But I like the fact that we, for some reasons of our own, are trapped underneath ground in a claustrophobic environment that we've lived for 200 years so it's basically it's our own environment we don't know anything else um and i love the idea that there's this kind of hierarchical setting of people who follow rules and then we have the misfits kind of who break the laws and who go against the status quo um i love a bit of that and the character is badass and cool yeah uh well and going off on that badassery uh like you, you i know you worked uh, with uh like a bunch of these uh, action uh, here's like tom tom cruise uh on, on, uh, yeah <laughs> never heard of him right oh, oh. Uh, so so um uh, him doing all of this dance and you're doing the other movie with him on the side now uh is that something that helped you uh, helped you get ready for for this part uh, in any way? Um, not really, but I think all the fighting and all the movement has helped. I mean, I'd never done stunts before I did Mission Impossible, um, so of course. But I mean, I also hadn't done any acting before I did my first acting job. Um, so I don't always. It's not the fact that I'm not grateful. I am grateful, but I've also continued on my own way. I keep on training, I keep learning, I keep getting better, I try new techniques. Uh, you know, Wade Eastwood was the first stunt coordinator I ever worked with. He's absolutely phenomenal. But there are lots of other people who bring other aspects to me that I then bring on to next jobs. So I guess life is about constantly learning and constantly getting better at different things and trying things out. Um, and this asked of me to relearn certain things because there are things they wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. Um, and that was tricky, you know. Wondering uh, what what your take on your character is. I, I kind of see some uh, resemblance as to like the George Orwell's 1984, kind of like like that's the kind of world your character kind of lives in. Uh, uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, it's one of the reasons I loved the project. It uh, it is a great allegory. Uh, Hugh Howie wrote a a book that in my mind is in the line of succession of 1984 brave new world and yeah this it, it, it's a cautionary tale uh it's uh, an allegory that resonates so uh intensely with with today um, yeah. i was reading the script i was like well yeah locked down and and society with controlled information couldn't get more relevant than that <laughs> and, uh, right 
and so uh I, I i was you know also always been curious about playing people in, uh, in positions of power that have to make these hard decisions and what kind of compromises they have to make to their own integrity and their own souls in order to do it yeah yeah for sure and and um kind of comparing the, the book and the show a, a bit uh, your character is more present in in the show and I, I, I wanted to know if there were any discussions you you had uh, in regards to how your character would shape out during this season that you could kind of bring in on your own uh, or if everything already was put down on, on the page for you when, when you kind of arrived uh, into the project well you know, they had written Sims, and as you said, Sims is not a really strong character in the book. Like, he, he isn't as prevalent. But they had written Sims to to evolve in his role to be stronger as the season went on. Yeah. And for me, like, what I was able to develop and work on with our writers was just continuing to show each side of Sims, these different sides, because obviously he's a... He is a heavy, he's the enforcer in the silo. He's the head of judicial security. But I was very happy and just pleased that they were like, okay, we're gonna show him as this family guy too. Yeah. Because you never think about that person that you see enforcing things and who's living with that by any means necessary mentality, just being with their son or, or with their wife or just, being amongst their family or smiling, you don't you don't see those those other parts of their humanity. Since, um, since I'm, I'm from Sweden myself, I obviously have to ask uh, what 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 made you uh, go with uh, Rebecca? Since that would be the obvious choice for for me, uh, but maybe not for for the rest of the world. Um, uh, it was I, obvious for us. Was, uh, I, if Rebecca was sitting here, I would make a joke like, "Well, I lost a bet, so we had to take her." <laughs> but uh, no, she is just she's not only is she a great actor and uh just does the job wonderfully there, there's in our business there's the call sheet right that tells you where you're going that day and there's number one on the call sheet and that's rebecca ferguson and she is a great number one she really helps lead the whole show and sets a great tone and she's very funny and inclusive and um just you know encourages people to do their very best um and you know she and i give each other a lot of uh, a lot of grief we just love to uh, tease each other uh, unmercifully so um it's been great the best the best um a uh super talented actor and a, a really wonderful person and a complete um uh completely lovely experience to conspire with her and to create with her. Yeah, shout out to Rebecca and, and all my people in Sweden. Um, yo, she is one of the realest, one of the rawest, super talented, um, but just one of the the most authentic people I've come across in this industry. Um, and just got so much heart. And I, I love being around. I feel like she's somebody that I would want to hang out with in any environment like yeah because <laughs> i like true people i like sincere people and that's who she is and she does represent sweden just so just so everybody knows out there she got she got a lot of love for where she came from um and yeah man she did a wonderful job in in this show as the lead she just blessed it so i'm grateful to be rocking with her that's my people and uh, i'm really hoping there will be uh, more seasons of this uh, but uh, i'm guessing that's also something you have to take into account while accepting a role like this you wanting yeah. to to be able to spend years doing it uh, possibly so what was that something you took into consideration and buddy when you make when you say sign these roles you know exactly what could come yeah. uh, <laughs> hence why you have waterproof contracts um but yeah and i mean it's it's formidable i mean the the role and for people who have read it i don't want to spoil anything but i mean the journey that is to come if it was to come if if this was to become a second season i mean yeah of course i'm excited i mean it's it's incredible 
Uh, but even this, just this season as a standalone, um, was a, such a great journey, you know? I miss her already. Yeah, well, fingers <laughs> crossed, uh, of course. And thank you, and thank you so much. Lycka till med allt. Jag gillar dina små pop-out bakom dig. Ja, du får joina dem någon gång i framtiden med någon av dina roller. I do already. You just have yeah. to get it. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.